Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, you're welcome. My name is Rosina Sharon. So today we're going to do something very, very different. We are not going to do makeup today. We, I'm just um, here to talk to you guys and uh, share my story with you guys. And before you do that, kindly subscribe. If you have not yet subscribed, share your thoughts in the comment section. Let us um, join the conversation. Let me know what you think about this topic. And uh, yeah, let us move on to the video. <sighs> So this is a topic I've been meaning to talk about for the longest time ever, but I was afraid. I was afraid of uh, the response I am getting. I am going to get one. The response I am getting. I am going to get from my family, my friends. I think it's only one friend of mine who knows this story. I do not tell this story to many people, and uh, they may come for me. They may come for me because they don't understand where I'm coming from. So I've been afraid to do this until today. Uh, this quote from Michelle Obama, The Becoming, from her The Becoming book, I don't know if you have read that book, uh, there is this quote, a very, very, very good quote I came about, um, uh, and the quote is, your story has value, dare to be vulnerable. And I was like, let me be vulnerable today, vulnerable, <laughs> let me be vulnerable today, okay, let me just close my eyes and uh, do this. So I was born and raised in Kalokol and uh, growing up we had uh, this houseboy. His name was Adicho. That is a true kind of name, Adicho. And uh, you know when you're comfortable around someone, because I grew up with Adicho, quite literally. He used to do uh, our house chores at home and we were very comfortable. We used to run around with him and you know share stories, laugh together. This is somebody I would never imagine would do anything to me. You understand? And at the time, this is, uh, this is what I want to emphasize on the point that sexual education is very important, especially for the girl child. Okay, even for the boy child. But if you have, ch if you have children, <laughs> generally, please, please, please make sexual education a priority to any of your children. Make it a priority. A lot of things together with Adicho, plus the family, the whole family. I was uh, very close to Adicho. My sister was very close. Like anybody, the family was very close to Adicho, you know. And uh, I was used to him. I used to, I was a child. I did not understand these things. You understand? I used to run around, hug him, you know, play, laugh, because he's comfortable around my mom, my dad. Everybody was just okay with Adicho until when I turned around 10, 11. At that time I was in class 5, going on to class 6, uh, in Kalokol Girls Primary. Adicho was, you know, our houseboy at home. So, cooking and cleaning was one of his, uh, you know, jobs, quote-unquote. So, when I turned, uh, uh, when I, I started uh, having, uh, growing uh, boobies, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that here on YouTube, but when I started to mature, rather, when I started to mature, to, so that is when your body starts to change. You start growing breasts and uh, it's it's a lot of changes, you know. You guys understand because most of my viewers are female. And um, growing up when you're comfortable around someone, even when you, you start, you know, becoming a woman, quote unquote, in your mind you're still a child at 10, 11, 12, going on 13. You do not understand, um, you know, this adulthood stuff. And at the time, I had not received sexual education. So at the time, I did not understand what was going on. You get, I was very, very ignorant about the topic. I was very naive. I did not understand nothing that was going on. So when I turned around at 10, 11, going on 12, around that age, is when Adichu started, um, I don't know if I should say taking advantage or sexual. At the time, I did not even know if sexual abuse at the time i did not understand that was a sexual abuse i wish i knew i really wish i knew i honestly i wish i knew what was going on because at the time i did not understand at all so so when my mom you know goes to take i don't know if from rural homes you do not have a bathroom inside of the house you have to get out of the main house the bathroom is uh just besides the pit latrine mostly <laughs> and it's normally outside of the house you have to walk to go there you know so when my mom goes to say take a shower or uh, 
yeah, you know, take a shower. Adi Cho would convince me to come to the kitchen where we used to cook, or rather where we used to cook. And then he would, um, you know, we used to play a, play a lot with Adi Cho. And I did not understand what was, going, what was going on at the time. I did not understand at all. So he would, uh, you know, raise me up. The way you raise children, you know, through your arms and then he lifts you up. He would lift me up, put me just above his um, penis. Just above his, uh, you know, private area. And he would... Because at the time we used to wear skirts, uh, we were not allowed to wear trousers in our home. We, wear, we wore skirts a lot and uh, dresses, mostly sundresses. So he would lift me up just above his, you know, through his arms to just above his uh, private area. Yeah? And then he would raise my skirt and lower my panties. And then he would put his his private uh, part inside of my panties yeah then he would tell me not to tell anyone at the time I'm 10 going on to 11 this is just he would convince me this is just a game yeah this is just a game and then um He did not like penetrate per se. He he never got the chance to penetrate. That one I can tell you. He never got the chance to penetrate. He would just put his private areas inside my panties and then keep you know lifting me up and down, lifting me up and down, lifting me up and down. And this is a person you you used to you know playing with. You're very comfortable. You don't know what is good. I wish I knew it was a sexual abuse. I wish I knew. But anyways, he would do that and then my mom would get out of it he would just make the timing very perfect and then he would as you know he hears my mom come out of the shower or rather out of uh, yeah out of the bathroom or whatever then he would put me down immediately and tell me not to say anything and he never said anything and this kept on going for he never paid attention but it kept going on for a while I did not say anything to anyone. In my mind, I knew it was a game. You know, it's... <sighs> Parents, please talk to your children. Please protect your children. Please. If only I knew. If only I knew. You know, I came to learn about sexual education later on in life. And, you know, I, I remember this thing and I was like, I wish somebody told me, I wish, I wish that, you know, education came to me sooner. I would know it was wrong, but I did not know. And nobody talks about this. Nobody talks about this. You know, nobody ever talks about this. So please, please, please sit your children down. Talk to them early about these things they do happen i never told anybody this story i'm very sure my family is going to be very shocked probably going to get mad at me and then that was not the only time i was sexually abused you know but this one gets to me because i wish i knew i wish honestly i wish i knew I wish somebody just educated me about these things before they happened. I wish... I, I wish somebody said anything. Now, moving on to, you know, I went, that was in primary school. And then when I joined high school, we never, you know, I never got to see Adicho at all. After high school, and you know, I maintained, I was a... I never, all through high school, I never had uh, any sexual, uh, nothing. Like I was, I was very pure <laughs> all through high school. I never did uh, nothing as pure as it can get. You know, I was a very good, quote unquote, good girl. Then I, I, I was done with high school. Now at 18, when I was done in, with the high school, 
I went to live with my aunt in Matunda. A place called Matunda, it is in Western province. So I went to live with my aunt in Matunda. And uh, there is this one time I went to Kitale, because most of the time I used to, you know, go to Kitale, buy some, especially for Christmas, I buy clothes for Christmas. You couldn't buy clothes in Matunda, you know, <laughs> it was very rural. So Kitale was better, say quote unquote, to buy outfits for yourself and, uh, you know, they could send me to Kitale sometimes to do shopping. But most of the time I went alone. So when I was in Kitale, I met this um, policeman. His name was uh, Paula. Paula. I remember that name like it happened yesterday. I will never forget not his face, not his names, not what he did to me. Never. Paul, uh, God. Paul took me to his home. His home, his house. It was the family's house. Family's uh, home, you know. Family's home. The parents were there, the sister was there. So you know when the parents are there, the sisters are there. You're comfortable, yeah? You don't expect anything to happen. Until he took me to his home. And you know I'm a virgin. I don't know anything. Honestly, I don't know. I did not know nothing to do with sex. Let me just be honest with you guys. I did not know nothing to do with sex. So I am a virgin. He took me to his room. And now he's uh, making these sexual advances. And I'm like, no. I am not ready for this. I was like, no, immediately. You know, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing, man. I was like, mm -mm. please, no. I don't know. And then he was a police officer. I never imagined a police officer would rape me. Do you know what? Oh my God. This guy gave me one hell of a slap. You know that slap that goes and then your face just turns as if you have broken neck? That slap. And I was very scared, you know. I was very, very scared. I was crying. And then when you cry, they don't want, you know, because it's a family compound. He does not want anybody else to hear. So now he covered my... One of his black t-shirts. He covered my mouth. Ah, there. He took that t-shirt in my mouth like that. Yeah. Made sure I could not say anything. Like if I scrammed, nothing would, you know, it won't get out over the walls. I see, nobody would hear. And then after he was done with my mouth and slapping me and telling me, I don't know if you understand. So for those who don't understand, so let me just quote what he said, what exactly he said, what, um, he said, Wacha kujifanya baby, ni kama hizi vitu haujui. Okay, that means like stop pretending as if you've never done these things. And I, I was about to, I've never, never, you know. And then he would slap me. And then telling me like stop acting a fool. He would beat me seriously. He, eh, the slaps. Hey. The blows, and then he took my hand, one hand, eh? tied it to one side of his bed like this, as if I was across. This other hand, like this, because I was trying to, you know, fight him. And and then he took one leg, tied it to the other corner. So I was like this, as if, you know, I am in a cross. Of... And then. He raped me. I mean, how do you en how do you enjoy like having sexual intercourse with a person who is in pain? Do you even do you even enjoy it? Like I was just oh it was just tears running. I couldn't do anything. I've been tied. I've been slapped. I've been. I did not say nothing the whole entire time. Nothing. He was done with what he was doing, and you know when you're a virgin, 
it is very painful it is very painful when you're a virgin even when you have consent i've been told even when you consent to it the first time anybody penetrates it's very painful it was that pain plus the pain from the slaps and blows plus me being helpless i was just oh god it was painful and then you know i started bleeding and that is when he realized i was actually a virgin and he He was done with me, he put me on a border border and told me to go. I could not talk to anybody, I could How do you even go start telling your family, you know what, I have been raped, who would even... The society, the society. I have a problem with the society of ours. I went back to Matunda. I did not say nothing, my mouth was a shut. Nobody would believe you. Nobody would, especially in an African set up no one would believe you not tell anyone not my sister not nobody i just kept that information to myself i never met paul again after that we never spoke we never did nothing i never reported you that is why i tell i'm telling parents especially sisters big sisters big brothers big cousins please talk to these children about sexual education it is okay to report when you have been sexually abused. It is okay to talk. This thing is going to eat you up for years. And I'm telling you this from my own experience. It is going to eat you up. It is going to affect most of your relationships. Talk about it. I know, especially for African setups, it is very hard for you to open up about these things. It is very hard. So I never, I never told anybody. Any, I wish I had somebody, you know. And then, growing up, especially in an African setup, you're not very close to your parents. That is a fact. You are never very close to your parents. You don't open up. Your parents are mostly very strict. It's either you do something right, <laughs> or you get punished. They never allow space for you to talk openly about things. They normally don't even talk about sex at all. So, I know it is very hard to find somebody to talk to about these things. It is very hard. Even for friends, it is very hard to tell a friend I was raped. They will, they will judge you immediately from the word go. And that is why I have a problem in society. Please educate your children about these things. Be very open with your children. Allow them to express themselves. That is the only way you will know what is going on around their life. Prevent it before it even happens. There are always signs. There are always signs. So, please, parents, society, cousins, brothers, I'm talking to you as a very hard woman right now, who did not have the chance to talk to say her story, to report the people who actually did this to her. I never got that chance, so please educate your children about these things. When you talk, it does not um, make you forget everything, you know, it does not do that, but it makes you feel better, so talk about it. Somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to get educated from that. As Michelle said, your story is valuable. So please dare to be vulnerable. And uh, so I was telling you when I, I, I decided to open up later on in life. I told um, my a very important person in my life that uh, I had been raped. Well, they were wondering why I did not keep relationships. I... I was messed up, really. Like, my life was just messed up. I was... I had the lowest self-esteem. And uh, I did not keep relationships. Like, it was all messed up. And, you know, they judged me for it. They kept judging me and judging me and judging me without knowing exactly why I act the way I act. And then, I, you know, I opened up to this person. I say, I have been sexually abused so many times. It is very hard for me to maintain, you know, to live a very normal life, quote unquote, have a very healthy relationship and, you know, prosper and not have anything 
both are in you mentally. Do you know what they told me? You have waited this long for you to tell me this. They, they were not even shocked, nothing. They just say, you have waited this long to tell me this story. Like, who are we supposed to tell these stories, please? Who are we supposed to tell this to? If you're going to judge us, who are we supposed to tell these stories to? How are we supposed to open up? How are we supposed to take this mental baggage away from us? How? If all you do is a judge, judge, judge. Who are we supposed to talk to? You're supposed to be the person I can, you know, confide in and you're judging me. How, we, how is that supposed to work? That is why, you know many people tell me I have a very hard exterior. I do not open up. So many relationships I've been in, they always tell me, why don't you open up? Why don't you open up? Like, you don't say anything. Whenever I am stressed, I do not tell anybody. I'm just by myself. And, uh, you know, they keep asking me, why do you, why don't you open up? I'm like, in my head, I'm like, you know, because opening up has made me more hurt than I was before. If opening up will cause me more pain, I'd rather not open up. If opening up will make people judge me more, I'd rather not open up. So please. So I don't open up for that reason. I'd rather die with my problems. That is a very bad mentality to have. But I, I struggle with it. I struggle with it every day. So please talk to your children. Talk to check out check on your friends. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family, talk to your relatives, talk to your daughters, talk to talk. Let them be free around you. And please, when a person comes to you and tells you about like I have been raped, I have been sexually abused, I have been physically abused. Listen. Don't be too quick to judge somebody from their exterior. Listen. If you can help them, please do so. Many people have gone through this and have, they have not been able to talk about it for so many reasons and we put ourselves in a bubble and we are almost always depressed. So today I just wanted to be vulnerable around you guys and thank you to Michelle Obama <laughs> and uh, tell you my story and please 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 if you have experienced any of this if you relate to any of this, leave us a comment. Let us um, keep uh, the conversation going. If you know how we can, we can move on from that because I've not been able to move on for such a long time from that one, two experiences. It has affected my life so very much. I've not been able to move on from that situation. If you can advise us on how you, you know, you were able to survive in life after your ordeals, and please, 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 I wish I, wish I had a hotline number for when you're raped, how you can call, call 911, call, call somebody, please. Don't be afraid to talk. I never had the opportunity to do so, but now you do. Even on my Instagram, on my Facebook if you're going through something and you need to say you need to tell someone about it I have a code for my Instagram followers and my Facebook followers and I'm also going to share that code with you guys so if you're going through sexual abuse physical abuse from your partner you're mentally being abused my code is just order for a makeup product come to my instagram and you don't want you know most of the time when you're sexually abused and physically abused your partner is a psycho they will not allow you the chance to tell somebody this is actually going on so just pretend you're ordering for a product and i'll know exactly what you're talking about if you're being raped 
just order any color pop products just come to me if you just say hi and then write code color pop if you can't order for products i may think maybe you're ordering from my store but if you write hi code say color pop lipstick say three of them any color pop product just start with the word code and i'll be able to talk to you to understand exactly where you're coming from so that is my story guys let me know let, let us uh, continue with the conversation thank you so much for watching i hope um it is not a very long video for you and um uh, hope we keep we start talking about these things more start educating our children more and uh let us grow from what we have been through thank you so much for watching i'll be seeing you in my next video bye